Hello. This is Snowcone's Serenade. It looks like a cute, short, heartfelt game. So we're just gonna fucking play it. Because we love that shit. Huh. So much snow. Wow. This has to be the worst cold spell ever, right, Jed? Oh. For a moment you forgot that your dog, Jedediah, isn't here with you. You would sit here with him every day. Every day since you got him from the dog shelter. That was nine years ago. But at the moment, Jed can't be outside for too long, especially in this extreme cold. Little fella isn't feeling too well at the moment. Lately, he's been struggling to eat and got a little slimmer on the waist. So, these past few days, you made it your mission to make every meal as interesting as possible for Jed. You think of new creations and combinations every day, and your house is slowly turning into the hottest fine dining spot for canines in the area. Still waiting for that call from Michelin, though. Talking to Jed feels like second nature, but today you'll have to talk to yourself instead. That sucks. Tell me about it. You're probably looking like a confused grandpa, just waiting for the bus or something. <laughs> so you hope that nobody can see your attempts at being normal today. <laughs> this is too real. Cars buried under one of these huge mounds of snow, and the road isn't even visible anymore. You're completely snowed in, that's for sure. Something about this sudden cold spell felt mysterious, almost otherworldly. Something in the air changed when it came. It's barely noticeable, but it's there if you focus on it. You should probably head back inside. It's time for Jed's medicine. A week or so ago, he was suddenly so fatigued that he couldn't even get excited about doing anything at all. You're a bit shaken up by the whole situation, but you want to be strong for Jedediah. Dogs can sense that kind of stuff. When it happened, you took him to the vet and got some medicine to help him with his appetite. He's quite fuzzy about taking it, though. Jed can be a dramatic dog. This is a nice spot. Pretty peaceful. Oh, and we vanished into the ether. <gasps> oh my god, look at that cute little pupperino. And look at our cute little house. Hey, Jed. Nice. <laughs> oh. Pat Pat. Hey boy, you resting? I know, I know. You're gonna be back to normal in no time, buddy. Doc ordered rest in a warm spot, so be a good boy and let me spoil you, okay? Okay, you need to give him the medicine as casually as possible, otherwise he'll be offended. <laughs> Let's be a little more inconspicuous. Okay, where? You turn your back and try to silently force the tablet out of its packaging. <laughs> you really should have done this in a different room. In your other hand, you're holding a small dog treat. It's one of those stripes of jerky. Stripes? Strips? Whatever. Jed notices you struggling with the packaging. You're not quite sure if he's excited or just curious. A couple of days ago, he started to show some signs of improvement. You're not sure if you're imagining things, though. At least he still pays attention to the expensive treats he loves so much, but it's too early to tell. What an economically irresponsible dog. <laughs> anyway, the only thing left to do now is to skillfully place the, tra the tablet in the treat without Jed noticing. This could be a little dicey, let's think. Skill checks, succeed or fail. Uh-huh, wrap the medicine into the treat, medium three. First is difficulty followed by a number, representing the minimum value you need to roll to be successful. Okay, depends on information you gather, mysteries you solve, and some good old luck. Failing is half the fun, you should try it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Do it. Oh, fuck yeah. We crit so hard. Oh my god, lucky start. Wow, you did it. 
It's not a beautiful treat, but it shows no immediate signs of the tablet you violently forced into it. Fuck yes. Jed feels something is up, but doesn't really think twice about it. He looks happy and starts munching on the treat. Good boy. Okay, this was easier than yesterday, right? Is he really getting better? I hope so. Me too. Since we're totally snowed in, there's not much to do today. Good thing we have to chill anyway, right boy? I know what we can do, Jed. Jedediah lifts his head, anticipating your next move. Most dogs react to certain magic words with enthusiastic tail wagging or even the famous zoomies. These words usually have something to do with going for a walk or playing in the park. But Jed is made of a different fabric. So you, par you prepare to say his magic words. <laughs> Golden Girls Golf Kitchen Nightmares. Let's watch some Star Trek, boy. There it is. Gentle panting from the excitement of watching another good old episode at Deep Space Nine. You still got it. Jed immediately looks a little more lively. There's nothing in this world that makes Jed happier than watching Captain and the Captain Benjamin Sisko navigating the challenges of administering a space station located at the mouth of a Bajoran wormhole. Diverse crew consisting of Federation members, merchants, service providers of all kinds, and Bajoran militia? Check. Promenade bustling with alien life forms, including a Ferengi bar and a security point led by a changeling? Check. Chief O'Brien? Check. Resistance to the brilliance of this show is futile, and Jed knows this. That dog has taste. You don't know if you deserve a good boy like him. You count yourself truly lucky. Perfect. Now it's time to get healthy, Jed. Just do it. It's easy. We've got some nice television, plenty of food, and you got your nice spot right beside the... What? What? Fuck was that? Radiator? Something terrible just happened. The sound of this room has changed. Before just now, it was a very, a very distinct sound. But now it's gone, and all that's left is this uh sound, which is always there, but sounds very odd on its own. <laughs> no, but this makes so much sense, for real. Sometimes sounds just stop, and you're like, hmm, that other sound that's usually there is loud, and I don't like it. Additionally, you hear some sort of zing sound, which is completely new to you and is throwing you off. So to keep it simple, you want the bri 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 sound back, but you don't know how. And then you suddenly feel something. Hey, is it getting colder? Stay calm, Jed. I'm going to check it out. The radiator is still warm to the touch, but you can feel it fading away fast. Huh? That's odd. Twisting the regulator does not bring back that sweet sound. You're starting to feel a little uneasy. It's not like you're a handyman or anything like that, and this extreme cold from outside will become a problem if this is a bigger thing. No way to help today. No way to get help today either. You're buried under all that snow. I know, Jed. It's fine. You stay here in your bed, and I'm gonna go fix the heating system in the basement real quick, okay? We're patting the bed instead of the dog, but you know. The gesture is there. It's probably just that weird heating system again. Last time I just had to flip the switch and we were back to normal. Okay, I'm off now. Wish me luck. Thanks, buddy. Um, yep. Here we go. Oh my god, the void. We look so cozy. Huh. The basement door feel some sort of hesitation pulling you away from the doorknob. Before you embark on this fateful quest to fix the heating, you stop and close your eyes. It might be a good idea to collect your thoughts for a second and think about your approach. Uh, how are you feeling today? Choosing your mood gives you the opportunity to deal with some situations in your own way. Social, compassionate, as well as in tune with the feelings of the people surrounding you. Sense your way a conversation. Sense your way around a conversation and use your charisma to your advantage. 
That sounds like a lot. Confrontational, daring, and even a little aggressive. Brute force is a simple solution for complex things. Let's stir the pot a little. Well collected, thoughtful, and smart. Tendency to tackle problems with deduction, reason, and knowledge. What if I'm feeling none of these? What if I just feel like a little potato today? What if we're just feeling kind of averagely okay? Uh, hmm. You know, that, I mean, let's go with empathic, I guess. I don't know about social, but, but, you know, we like compassion. That's fun. We're a fan of that. Oh. Huh? The hell? Why is there snow everywhere? What you're seeing in front of you is shocking, to say the least. The floor, the pipes, everything is covered in snow and ice. Where the fuck is my furnace? And the switch? Well, it used to be right over there, but it's just gone. How is this even possible? Tough to say, but that creepy door might give you some answers. Hmm. Suspicious. Oh. Oh, I guess it was just a door. Okay, well. This door looks totally out of place. Like, not in line with your interior design concept at all. Where did it even come from? Um... Knock on the door. No answer. Just the sound of your soft mittens hitting the wooden frame. That wasn't satisfying at all. Huh. You imagined your door knocking to be firm, almost authoritarian. <laughs> The kind of door knocking where the person on the other side would already know that something bad is gonna happen. <laughs> but instead of a bang, you got a little timid little thud. It sounded more like the knock of a shy college kid delivering pizza as a side hustle or something. Delivery. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Damn it. This is my house and my basement. I don't have to knock on any fucking doors. <laughs> That's more like it. this is your domain. Maybe you shouldn't let this kind of humiliation slide. Your honor as a house owner is on the line. <laughs> knock again, but this time hard. Damn it. Oh no. Your anger making you blind and stupid. <laughs> You didn't realize it, but that door is riddled with splinters. One of the nastier specimens stuck out at a perfect 90 degree angle, welcoming your bare fist into its spiky arms. Bare fist, I thought I was wearing mittens. Shit. Well, ow. You feel a sharp and relentless pain in your right hand. This is one of the worst splinters you've ever had might even rank among the top five worldwide splinters that anybody ever had. This violent piece of wood doesn't simply stick in your index finger. It's embedded in your whole being. You are the splinter. <laughs> the splinter is you. So get used to it, because this thing isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Oh, <gasps> yes. We have a new friend. Well, we have to give it a name now. That's how it works. Fuck yes. You tap into the soul of that little piece of wood. There's not much in there since it's a splinter, but it must have a name, right? Oh, you're called Chuck? Chuck? <laughs> what a cool name for a splinter. It, it is? Yeah. Sure, maybe it is. Chuck seems to be a cool cat. Enough talking, Chuck. Back into your fucking meat pocket. <laughs> Ow! That's going to take some getting used to. <sighs> Maybe I should have gone with aggression, because apparently I really want to fight this door. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we could inspect the door. Or we could even just try opening it. But you know what? 
We have beef with this door now. I'm fighting this door. You cannot overlook the disrespect shown by that fucking door. You take a good hard look at your finger. It's throbbing and pulsating with a deep bass drum-like tone. Chuck is a DJ. Your finger is the stage. Are you really going to accept this humiliation? You're dreaming about sweet revenge. Oh, that's a really rough... That's really rough difficulty, but you know what? We're gonna fucking beat up that damn door. <laughs> Perfect. Ah! Oh! The door beat me up. Nothing. It won't budge. Let's be honest. You're no match for this experienced veteran of a torment. If this was an Olympic competition in wrestling... That door would be waving and smiling on the winner's podium with a medal dangling around its hinges. You, on the other hand, would have been integrated into the Met, drooling nonstop with a mean headache to top it all off. Maybe you should just try to open the door normally. It feels odd because just opening it seems so obvious and sensible. Not your style at all. But maybe, maybe you should reconsider. I hate you, Dora. I learned a lot today. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I love this. We're we're an idiot, and nothing is greater than that. Show off your cool new splinter to make the door jealous. Look, I've stolen a piece of you today, idiot. Remember this? That's right. This is Chuck, and he's like totally awesome. Good for you. You have a new friend, and you keep him in the meat pocket that is your index finger. You basically just left this interaction as the clear winner. <laughs> Fine, let's inspect the door. <gasps> oh my god! Rusty hinges are hanging onto a wooden frame, riddled with those spiky splinters you already had the pleasure of getting to know. This door looks like it's hundreds of years old. Next to a cast iron door handle, you can see a little wooden plaque can make out very fine etchings in the wood, but they're extremely hard to see. It's all just weird symbols. Numerous small circles surround a large snowflake that emits rays in all directions. Circles appear to dance around the snowflake. Some of them are outside the snowflake's aura, but they don't seem to move at all. Maybe they can only exist inside the aura? It's a theory, at least, but it doesn't really help you understand what's going on. Okay, fine. It's a little scary. Slowly, you're moving your hand towards that door handle. Just before you open the door, you can feel something strange, but it's too late! Huh? Mm-hmm. Could it possibly be the outside? Perhaps. What in the fuck? Ah! Wait, what? Purplish threshold emerged behind the door. You feel light like a feather in a really, really bad way. This must be a dream. An elaborate prank? A movie? Maybe a commercial. What could it be for? Moody purple light appliances? Ooh, lava lamps. Probably. Sounds plausible, yes. This is fine. Floating in the air in front of a purple thingy and not being able to move. Totally fine. Oh, and by the way, you're not actually moving towards the thingy, are you? Good. Just making sure. Wait. You are moving towards the thingy? Is this the time to panic? Scratch that, you're panicking. You can't move, nothing works, access denied. I'm sorry for touching your door. Hold on tight, Chuck. It's too bright. Your eyes close automatically. You see nothing but the image of that bench behind your house. It would have been so great to be able to sit there again with Jed. You're so sorry it had to end like this. Here it goes. <laughs> well, R.I.P. Welcome to Snow Cone? Uh. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, hello? God? Is that you? 
seriously, God? Uh, check, please. Get a hold of yourself. <laughs> You're obviously in shock, but this situation needs your attention. Welcome to... Snow Cone? Never heard of it. You're not sure if this is... If any of this is even remotely real, but what's there to do except checking it out? Come on, this is ridiculous. I have to get back to my dog. He's freezing. Or he will be. No answer. Nothing but cold air and snowflakes. This place seems abandoned. The cold is out of this world. You've never experienced anything like this. That jacket is extremely thick but has no chance against whatever this is. So no options but to just start walking. Huh. Dokie dokie. Well, we're walking. <gasps> Specials of the day, icy chicken feet, tonkatsu skewer. <gasps> skewer! In the middle of this liminal snow desert, a tiny building has been carved out. Seems like they're selling street food. I love street food. An oasis of scents, lights, and colors. The only thing missing is warmth. What's even more grotesque is its inhabitant. A person made of snow, with arms and legs, tends to the food as if any of this were normal. You move through this fever dream almost automatically, as if you're on rails. <laughs> Before you know it, you approach the snow creature. Oh, hello. I welcome you, outsider. I knew someone like you would come one day. Huh. Incredible. The ball of snow speaks to you, but clearly... Speaks to you clearly and in a slightly awkward way that seems a bit lengthy and laborious. Please have a look at the menu and enjoy my food. I'm sorry, but what is all of this? Oh, such a big question right away. The snow person seems kind. They tend to the food with exceptional care. I'm sure you have many questions. Tell me, how did you get here? Uh, a door? Maybe you should elaborate. I, uh... Scratch that, it's a little tough to elaborate on a story like this one, you're still in shock. Some odd things are happening to me, I think. Oh, yes, outsider, you speak the truth. My name is Shozo. Welcome to my humble little shop. He gestures towards his little food shack. It's clean and tidy, even though it looks very old. I specialize in freshly made skewers. Frozen eggplant skewers, frozen chicken skewers, icy onion broth. Is everything frozen? Because that kind of contradicts your freshly made thing. Oh, yes, of course. But first, tell me about yourself. Shozo said that, says that with a smile that only comes from genuine kindness. Can you tell me where I am? The snow chef hesitates for a fraction of a second. Excuse my manners, but may I ask you a question in return? Where did you come from, outsider? Um, my basement? Oh, I see. And what did you do there? Well, my heating broke and I wanted to fix it. But then there was this weird door and I got pulled into this place. Ah, yes, that makes sense. It does? Yeah. How so? Outsider, welcome to Snow Cone, our tiny settlement. We are snow people. Snow people? Does he think that this is something that you can just say to someone at random and not come across as a lunatic? Oh, I'm sorry, Outsider, I must sound like a lunatic. Oh good, this is all a figment of my imagination. Well... You can think of us as settlers, moving from place to place. Always in search for warmth so we can survive. Warmth? Yes, outsider. Is he kidding? But it's ridiculously cold in this place. Ah, yes, I understand your confusion. Huh? Our understanding of warm and cold is quite different from yours. See, in this place, you cannot have one without the other. Our element is the cold snow and the ice, but it cannot be sustained on its own. We need another source of energy to strengthen our settlement. It becomes the cold that keeps us going. Until it's depleted, we have to move to the next source. I don't get this at all. What has all this got to do with me? 
That is the sad part, outsider. According to your story and my knowledge of this place, I came to the conclusion that we have inhabited your furnace. You did what? It's been adopted by our world and now powers everything you see around you. The ice, the cold, even the person standing in front of you. You're slightly closer to understanding what's going on here. Wait, this is actually bad. I need my heating. Believe me when I say that I do not agree with this practice at all. Sadly, I am not the one who decides these things. So who does? I need to fix this. I have responsibilities. I can't be here right now. What you need is an audience with the mayor of Snowcone. She's the one deciding the fate of the settlement. Mayor? Where would she be? Follow the path to the right until you see a big cone-shaped structure. Of course, a big cone-shaped structure. <laughs> because that's totally normal. I'm very sorry for your troubles, outsider. I know you do not want to hear this, but I think your arrival will put our settlement back on the right track. I guess I have to speak to the mayor then. Follow the path, outsider. And come back if you have any questions about Snow Cone. Especially if you see something strange. Um, thanks? What kind of strange? How strange we talking? Come back any time, outsider. I would love to know more. Huh? Know more about what? More about you. Oh. Okay. Thanks. I'll be around. Great, outsider. <laughs> okay. Oh. Ooh. Oh, hell yeah. That looks cool as heck. <gasps> Look at that computer. I love a computer with a face. The intimidating cone-shaped structure dominates the sky. Next to a futuristic checkpoint, you see this weird panel. Is this thing the doorbell? Also, is that a vending machine? We should get snacks. Not a doorbell, bozo. Don't even think about touching me. Oh? Um, sorry. It's a computer? I'm a city computer, Michelle. Okay, hi Michelle. Um, I want to speak to the mayor. So what? Think I let every fucking hobo through door? Huh. <laughs> that computer just called you a fucking hobo. So mean. Um, think about a, co a good comeback. Yes. Do it. Fuck yes. You get a feel for this peculiar computer and come up with something that's just as blunt as its comments. Hey, scrap heap. Don't you have a garbage truck to catch or something? Nice computer case. Does it come in non-ugly variants as well? Any talents except not being able to move or exist without electricity? Pfft, what a loser. At least that silenced the computer for a moment. <laughs> Oh, you're funny, dude. Wow, okay. <laughs> Please, this is important. Oh no! I'm so sorry, human! Here I am, doing my job like the diligent computer that I am, but now... You tell me that, oh my god, it's actually important? That might be sarcasm. Yow, yowie, wowie! How could I be so stupid? <laughs> It's sarcasm. Oh, go on through, human. It's okay. Oh, wait. It's not. Because I don't give a shit about your story. Get in fucking line. She's a busy woman. Why are you so mean to me? <laughs> what a noob. I'm a computer, dude. If you get your little feelings hurt by a machine, that says more about you than it does about me. Okay, bye. This is ridiculous. Oh, shit. Well, that one hurt. Something stopped you real hard. Like a force field or something. Ow. <laughs> I know, right? It's a force field. 
has a mean bite, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you don't have an appointment with the mayor, so be on your way. How can I get one then? Let me check the schedule. Ha, <laughs> just a sec. This Excel sheet is pretty big. Great. There it is. Next available date would be in a couple of months. What? That's ridiculous. There, I don't even see anybody here anywhere. Well, it is, so what do I care? You'll have to take the appointment or try your luck with the freaking contest over at the stage. Contest? Please stop repeating me. Jacob is renting out his setup for the city's annual open stage karaoke contest. Oh my god, I was born for this. I'm dialed in from over here judging the contestants. You have to know that I'm a total music freak. Haha. <laughs> How does this help me in any way? Well, it's probably not, but the first prize is a dinner with the mayor. Dinner with the mayor? That's it, you're gonna save Jed by singing. That's so fucking awesome. <laughs> huh. I wish you would stop making that sound, human. What sound? If you know what you're doing, it's annoying as hell. So, karaoke contest, dinner with the mayor. Come on, human. It's exhausting to hear you talk as it is. Don't start fucking repeating me now. Just walk over to the right and talk to Jacob about entering the Ding Ding Contest. Now get lost. I got some music to explore. Oh my god. Yes, look at that cutie. <gasps> karaoke. Rando. Jacob. Karaoke machine. Dark figure. Hello. Who are you? What's your deal? Some kind of shadow occupies the darkness in this area of the stage. Is that a person? They're shrouded in some kind of blurry veil. Hello? Nothing, just an odd tingling sound behind the veil. Anybody there? This is a little spooky. You just can't get through. There has to be more to it though, right? Maybe if you just focus hard enough you could make sense of it? You also remember those etchings on the door in your basement. Maybe they have something to do with this. You feel like your little theory might help you figure this out. Yes. Shit. No matter what you do, you've lost all of your brain cells and you just can't quite comprehend this odd veil. This is indeed a person. Can't see or hear them. Maybe Shozo can help you with this. He told you to talk to him should anything strange happen. This is pretty strange, right? Okay. Well, fascinating. Who are you? Are you drunk? Hi. In front of the stage stands a solitary young man. He seems incredibly preoccupied with something. As you approach him, there's a slight twitch in his posture. He's very aware of your presence, but purposefully doesn't give you a look or even anything at all. It almost seems like he's trying to be invisible. Oh. His tall and lanky stature makes this task impossible, though. He's towering over you, even though he might not want to. He hands you a piece of paper, saying, Please leave me alone. Huh. How odd. Okay. Bye. Look at the karaoke machine. It looks like a karaoke machine. You can choose a song from an endless list and perform on stage. <gasps> hey, hey, hey. No touching, kiddo. You can check out the songs, but everything else is off limits. Give me the flakes and you can perform. What? One look at the list is enough to reveal the hard truth. You don't know any of these songs. You're in a weird snow world with weird snow songs. Oh fuck, this is a disaster. Unmelt my heart. Your cold embrace? Thermometer medley. <laughs> it's completely obscure and hopeless. You can't sing any of these weird tracks. Lost in the deep noob. Wait, huh? Was that the computer? Do you know how annoying that is? Every other fucking word out of your mouth is huh? What's up with that? Magell, is that you? You can see you can see Magell appear on the screen. Who else will call you noob noob? Nobody, like ever? Exactly. I'm at the stage. Not blind, I can fucking see you, bozo. 
Charming as always, thanks. Anyway, all these songs are fucking ridiculous. I mean, what the hell is Slippery Slopes of Love even supposed to be? That one is a classic. I can't sing any of these, though. I don't know anything about them. Oh, bummer. What the fuck am I supposed to do now? Listen, Bozo, if you want me to make you sing and perform well, you might as well shove me down, because that would be straight up impossible. Get some help from the freaking locals or something. You're a big boy, figure it out. Great. Just fucking great. I look forward to the performance. I'm the judge. I'm looking for something truly unique. Real emotions. With a little fr flicker, Michelle leaves the screen. I think it might be safe to say that I'm having a bad fucking day. <laughs> what do you want, flakes? Hey, ghetto! Huh? This person seems to be made of some kind of ice. Very stylish, but also a little spooky. He looks slippery. You're looking to be a star? A star? But I'm a star already? <laughs> you silly. Yeah, exactly. Shouldn't everybody be able to see that? Only five flicks sing for the crowd and enter the open challenge. Oh, so you're in charge of the challenge. Yep, kiddo. Na Jacob's the name. That's great. I have to speak to the mayor. Gotta win first, kiddo. I can see talent when it's in front of me. You got mountains of this stuff. That'll be five flakes. Like, snowflakes? Are you kidding me, kiddo? His demeanor suddenly changed. He looks like he's just been insulted. Uh-oh. Why isn't he saying anything? Um, uh, not kidding. I'm sorry. How can you not know? Flakes make the freaking world go round. You use them for literally everything. You buy food with them, rent a room with them. You pay me with them for letting you perform. Understood, kid? So it's money. Okay, that's disappointing. Somehow you thought this place was really different from your world, but apparently it's not at all. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't have any flakes. His face changes again, this time in the form of anger mixed with deep shock. Uh-oh. He doesn't seem to have any control over it either. Is he that obsessed with money? Why don't you just get fucking lost then, eh? What? Oh my god, that sounded straight up sinister. Huh? You heard me. Come back with the dough. Don't come back at all. Is this guy psychotic or something? No time for charity, kiddo. Um, how does this work anyway? First things first, you pay the fucking fee! Five flicks! Directly to me! Then you choose a song, get on stage, perform, or whatever. I'm not involved in the judging, Michelle does that. Ah, grumpy computer from the security checkpoint. If you're good enough, we win the challenge and get to have dinner with the mayor. Easy as pie! Fork over the fucking flakes, kiddo! Okay, um, where are all the contestants? Yeah, maybe it's a slow year. Don't you worry about it, kiddo. Still a good investment, trust me. Only weirdo coming up to me so far was that idiot over there. Points to the sad looking kid. Came here with nothing to say, a piece of friggin' paper. Wanted me to get him on the stage for free, can you believe that? Get back when you find your guts and some money, kiddo. Once a loser, always a loser. Damn. Shit, fuck, what is your deal? What's it you, kiddo? I think it's a bad look for a promoter like you. Business, you gotta be tough, kiddo. Do you know how many rotten eggs trying to do business with business with me? Hoof! Grabbed every single one of them out of their little basket. Throw them to the ground. I'll do what's best for business. Don't you worry about the rest, kiddo. He really doesn't care about anything but money, huh? Wow, that's crazy. How do I choose a song? Just take a look at the friggin' songbook. It's right there next to the karaoke machine. Careful though, that stuff cost me serious cash. Okay, goodbye. Help me, please. I'm so sorry. Well, actually, hmm, hold on. Maybe I'll talk to Shozo first. Since clearly that kid doesn't want to chat. Wait, no, I wanted to look at the friggin' vending machine. Oh well. 
Hello, friend. Hello again. I'm happy to see you, outsider. Get comfortable. Tell me about your shop, my guy. Can I have some foods? Of course, outsider. What do you want to know about it? Um, what are those dishes about? Are they not looking delicious? I mean, they actually are, but it's all kind of frozen. Do you want to taste something? Well, what do you recommend? Yes, a vegetable broth is fresh freshly made. I just finished it. I would love for you to have it, friend. Sure, why not? Why not? Let me tell you why not. It's all totally freaking frozen. What are you doing? Uh, don't say anything now. That's super impolite. Is something wrong, outsider? No, nope, everything is splendid. I'm definitely not having an argument with myself in my head. While saying these words, your worst fear became reality. Shozo produces, oh my god, a block of ice in the shape of a ramen bowl. It's huge and crashes down on the table with a thunderous noise. Through its translucent service, surface, you can see vegetables and herbs of all kinds. There you go, outsider. May this freshly prepared delicacy represent the culinary qualities of our city well. Great, now he's bringing the whole city into this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now you're starting to sweat. How you're able to do so in this bitter cold is beyond you. It seems this is the kind of embarrassment that opposes science entirely. Thank you so much, Shozo. You truly are a first-class idiot. Do you know that? What are you going to do now? You better not insult Shozo. He's probably the nicest person you've ever met. Quick, he's watching you. Oh no, he looks so stoked. What now? You can't possibly eat this. It's a legitimate solid block of ice. This is not one of those cases where something that looks inedible is actually quite tasty. This is actually bad. I would be bad. You will not be able to eat this. What are you going to do now? Oh, fuck. Force the ice bowl down into your body with pure violence. Distract Shozo and make the block disappear. Oh, shit. I mean, they're both just as tough, so we might as well try and fucking eat it. We're gonna die a little bit. Wait. This one's a ruthless one. What is this? Just a regular roll? Fuck it. Shit. You are truly insane, huh? In a sick twist of fate, you decide to actually try and eat a humongous block of ice with some pieces of vegetables in it to sweeten the deal. Additionally, you also decide to do so violently, as well as relentlessly. That would make this whole ordeal quick and painless, at least in your head. The reality couldn't be further from the truth. You stir daggers into the bowl, and then you attack it. Somehow your tongue is the vanguard of this attack. You have not planned that at all, but it happens anyways. It gets stuck on the ice bowl immediately. And now the rest of your momentum has to go somewhere. Therefore, the rest of your head follows suit and gets buried into the bowl with such force that it shatters into a thousand little pieces. All that's left of it is that one piece stuck to your tongue. Shozo gives you a curious look with a cautious smile. Smile and eat the fucking piece. With your tongue out, you smile at Shozo. He smiles back, but... You won't fool anybody here. You look like a fucking idiot. You move your numb tongue back into your mouth and slowly munch on the piece. Oh, it's actually pretty good. It's frozen, but what you taste is quite fantastic. I'm so sorry, Shozo. <laughs> He's laughing. Yeah, I'm dying and you're laughing. You truly are special, friend. I will cherish this moment for eternity. Thank you for sharing it with me. Huh. What a great guy. Fantastic. I'm so pleased. Um, so there was a dark figure over at the stage. Can you help me make sense of that? Oh, I see. Yeah, these phenomena seem to be happening, happening more and more, outsider. Do you know what they are? 
Maybe, but it's very difficult to explain. Does it look a little bit like a cloud? Uh-huh. You should try changing your perspective when approaching them. Uh, wait, what? How do I do that? Tilt your head a little, outsider. With a little patience, the person behind that veil will suddenly be revealed. Okay. I'll just try tilting my head like a lunatic then. Well, I mean, yeah, that's basically it. Gotcha. Excellent. You said you don't agree with the mayor? Yes, outsider. It seems that we, we have lost our way. This way of living is wrong. If you take something, you also have to give something back. Do you not agree? Shows us sure has some big words hidden up his sleeves. Might sound a little cheesy sometimes, but it all feels very genuine. Outsider? Oh, whoops, sorry. Oh, it's fine. I think I understand. You must be very preoccupied at the moment. What I meant was that the town of Snowcone is part of a natural circle. We take something, but we also give back. But the mayor is no longer honoring this silent agreement. We should have never come here in the first place. Nothing gives us the right to take your warmth from you. He sends some kind of secret in Shozo's words. He seems to choose them even more carefully than usual. Will you tell me about your big preoccupation, outsider? Huh? Something is bothering you deeply. What is it? Oh. Seems like it's pretty obvious. It's just my dog, Jedediah. You have a little dog? How beautiful. <laughs> well, yeah, not so little anymore, but he's already a bit older. And now the heating is broken and... Even though it's extremely cold, and... I see. Yeah, sorry. For what? It's more than understandable. You worry about him a lot, don't you? I have so many worries. Every day. All the time. You know... I'm realistic about it, I suppose, but, you know, it's tough. I understand. Being realistic about something like that is almost impossible. Yeah. Jedediah is not just any dog, after all. He's your friend, right? Of course. He's even more. Jed is my family. Dogs are truly special in that regard, outsider. They do not bring any reservations into their friendship with us. I bet Jedediah is the same. He follows and loves you unconditionally. <laughs> yeah, he does. Awkward laugh. Your way of coping with uncomfortable things. What's wrong? Uh, well, he became pretty sick a few weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry, outsider. This must weigh heavily on your soul. Well, I'm trying not to think of it too much. And also, I am i don't want him to see me worry all the time. I feel like it kind of rubs off on him sometimes. I see. You're worrying a lot, are you not? Yeah. I understand. I know that feeling. Really? You seem so calm. <laughs> I'm just old friend. With time, I was able to calm down and enjoy the present as much as possible. It's not always easy, but I found that making an effort does indeed help. Yeah, I just hope he's okay. I'm scared. I'm scared of him dying. Well, since that is the future, why do we not focus on the present again, outsider? The present in which Jedediah is very much alive. That's true. It's just that it became so much more real when he got sick. You're so wrapped up in your routine, and then in one tiny moment, you're completely thrown off. Kind of felt like an idiot, because I froze for a second. Didn't know what to do or where to bring him. But then you did the right thing anyway. I guess. I brought him to the doctor immediately and took care of him all day. Good. Yeah, it'll probably be fine, right? I mean, he seemed to be doing better with the medicine this morning. I wasn't sure, though. Maybe I should call the doc when I get back. There might be more I could do for him. <laughs> of 
friend, slow down. Huh? It's okay, you're doing good. Remember what I said about your worries. Yeah, you're probably right. Guess I should get back to fixing my heating, huh? I wish you the best of luck, outsider. Thanks for the talk, Shozo. It really helped. Of course. Oh. Huh? Just one more thing. When you meet the mayor, ask her about Flake. Ask her about Flake? What does that mean? Do not worry, outsider. She will know. Okay, thanks. Of course, be safe. Welp, thanks for the help. Of course, outsider, come back anytime. Okie dokie, I go. Wait, what's over here? Oh, I see. I think. Go back this way, and then go this way. <laughs> 